TAB-PFN is a neural network model that can generate remarkably accurate classification and regression predictions on tabular spreadsheet data in a single forward pass without any extra training or hyperparameter tuning required. Under the hood, TAB-PFN uses roughly the same transformer architecture used as recent generative AI language models, but it is pre-trained on millions of synthetic data tables, so it can perform zero-shot Bayesian inference when you hand it a new spreadsheet. This model excels at calendar seasonality and short-term wiggles, such as cyclical patterns that are common in macroeconomic and business data, but it is not a drifting trend extrapolation engine, and you won't have much luck using it for stock prediction. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to implement TAB-PFN for forecasting U.S. Federal Reserve economic data and compare it to a baseline XGBoost model. Beyond point estimates, I'll also show you how TAB-PFN can return off-the-shelf calibrated prediction intervals, which is something that many machine learning methods can't do without extra tooling. If you're worried about hardware requirements, you can run this tutorial on a CPU-only laptop. And by the way, this code is super short and compact, so it can be easily modified and deployed for your own purposes. Start by creating a new Python environment with the following libraries, TAB-PFN, XGBoost, Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, Scikit-Learn, and Requests. Next, open up a Jupyter Notebook in your code editor of choice and import these libraries or specific modules, in addition to a few built-in Python libraries, such as OS, IO, and Time. We'll first set an environment variable that lets tab-pfn run on your CPU, even when your table exceeds 1,000 rows. The demo data in this tutorial is only a few dozen rows, but you can flip this switch whenever you feed tab-pfn a larger data set. We'll now import the Federal Reserve Economic Data, which is known as FRED. I'm grabbing the CSV URL of the monthly US Housing Start series through a request.get function, and then I'm placing that raw CSV object directly into the pandas read CSV function. The parse dates argument tells pandas to convert the observation date column into real date time objects, so our index will behave like a proper time series. After that, I rename the columns, set date as the index, and sort chronologically so the data frame is ready for modeling. Then I use the lock function to subset the data set to only include data from January 2022 onward to focus on the most recent housing cycles. And after that, I create two features. First, an integer equivalent of the month of the calendar year. Second, a running index of each period within the full time series. I normalize this so that instead of time one to n, the first row is zero and the last row is one, with even spacing of all other time periods in between. Now that the features are ready, I'm going to pick a 16 month forecast horizon. Everything except those last 16 points become the training set. Those final 16 observations are our holdout test set. I'll split each into features X and target Y, and then immediately initialize the tab PFN regressor model, where I'll explicitly set the device to CPU and set the ignore pre-training limits to true as well, which is also necessary for CPU runs. With the model initialized, FIT runs a single forward pass of the neural network on the X and Y training data, then I call predict on the X testing data twice, once for the median point forecast and once for the 10th and 90th quantiles, which will give us an 80 percentile prediction band, which we'll later plot. I'll now estimate a baseline default XGBoost model using similar fit and predict functions. It's possible to get prediction intervals for XGBoost, but there is no equivalent off the shelf implementation as we just did with tab PFN. Finally, I'll calculate the mean absolute error for both tab PFN and XGBoost so we can compare accuracy. And at this point, I'll also use matplotlib to plot the time series results for both models. We can go ahead and run the full code now. Looking at the chart, we can see visually that the orange tab PFN estimates do a better job of approximating the actual observed time series data. For instance, XGBoost does not anticipate the seasonal dip that occurs at the beginning of the test data period. If we check the mean absolute error, we can also see that tab PFN has a much lower error value. This is just one example. With an arbitrary testing horizon and look back training data time period, you can play around with these parameters to check the sensitivity of these results yourself. One more thing. There actually is a dedicated time series tab PFN library 
but it requires a GPU or API access. If you're looking to seriously leverage this model, I've linked to this library in the video description below. And if you found this video useful, make sure to like, comment, and share it, as well as subscribe to the Deep Charts channel for more videos on the latest machine learning and AI methods and tools.